So, in our previous lectures, we had looked at a number of examples in Verilog and we have also seen how to write test benches for such modules that we have described. We had looked at some of the features of the test benches, how you can apply the stimulus values for combination circuits, how you can apply clocks for sequential circuits and so on. Now, in this lecture, we shall be looking at the test benches, the different commands that are available in a more formal and elaborate way and in the next lecture, we shall be looking at some examples on some of the features that we will be discussing in the process. Okay. So, our lecture is titled Verilog test bench. Now, these are the things which I have already discussed earlier. So, let us have a quick recap. So, a test bench is a Verilog module, it is a procedural block that runs or executes only once. Uh, you recall a procedural block can be of two types the always procedural block and the initial procedural block. Particularly the initial procedural block is used for writing test benches because there are certain things which you need to run only once and the initial block is meant to be run only once. Of course, there are some parts of the test bench like generating a clock which you want to do it repeatedly that part you can do using always if you want. Okay. Fine. So, such this initial blocks and this test benches written using those they are used only for simulation. So, if your task is to synthesize a circuit then you do not write the test bench. You will be writing test bench if you if you want to verify your design by applying some test inputs and see what the outputs are coming then only you write the test bench. Okay? Fine. So, roughly speaking what does the test bench do? They generate the different inputs to your circuit or your design like clock, reset and the other functional inputs. So, suppose you have created a design let us call it a design under test or DOT you can apply such inputs to DOT. And it can also monitor the outputs. You see when you, you apply the inputs after that you may want that I want to see what the outputs are. So, your test bench can just print those values on the screen or if you want it can also dump it in a file. So, that you can later on see the signal values in a nicely graphical interface the waveforms the timing diagrams and so on in that form. Okay. So, you can view the outputs in whatever way you want to by specifying it appropriately. Right? As I said you can either print the values or you can dump them in a file from where you can view them in the form of waveforms. Fine. So, the basic requirement is the design that you have created the inputs of it should be connected to the test bench because the test bench will be applying the inputs to the DOT. Similarly, the outputs of the DOT should be connected to the test bench because the test bench would be reading those values and will be printing or displaying whatever you want to. Okay. So, the these are the things I have already mentioned. So, in a test bench you can either use initial blocks or always blocks also. So, initial procedural block is the one which executes only once, but always block is repetitive. So, for generating some periodic signals like clock you can use always. Okay. Okay. Pictorially whatever I told just now you can visualize like this. Let us say this is your design which you have written in Verilog I am showing it as a box and this is the test bench you have written. So, the first thing what you do is that you instantiate a copy of your design within the test bench. Then you connect the input lines of your design under test to some stimulus output lines from your test bench. So, your test bench outputs will be your inputs to your DOT. Similarly, 
whatever DOT generates as outputs that will be read by your test bench and it will be monitored. You can either print it, you can display it, whatever. So, stimulus and monitoring, these two mechanisms are also part of your test bench. This gives you the overall picture. Fine, a very simple example to start with. Let us say here we have a simple module description where there are four gates in our design. There are seven parameters A, B, C, D, E, F, Y, where these six parameters A, B, C, D, E, F are the inputs and Y is the output and T1, T2, T3 are and this Y are some wires. T1, T2, T3 are the intermediate lines and Y is the final output. So, this is just an arbitrary description, this is not any design which is meaningful, it does not compute any meaningful function just for illustration. So, you instantiate the 4 gates, you appropriately specify the input values, and some of them can be inverted also like not B you can write and this T1, T2, T3 are the outputs of G1, G2, G3 which will be the inputs of the last gate here. So, finally, the output is y. So, this kind of test bench you have already seen earlier. So, in the test bench what you do? First thing is that you instantiate this module, this a b c d e f y. Okay, here let us say we give the same names a b c d e f y. So, whatever were the inputs of here a b c d e f, here they will be outputs actually and you have to declare them as reg because you will be assigning them inside a procedural block. You will be assigning some values to A, B, C, D, E, F that is why they will be reg. And for a module Y was the output, but for your test bench this Y you declare just as a wire because this will be an input. You, you can just read it and you can just print it. So, inside the initial block you can give several statements, we shall explain this meaning. First is a monitor command, monitor actually means that whenever any of these variables whatever you specify in this list they change, you print them in this format. First you print the time simulation time, then A equal to percentage B means binary, A equal to this value, B equal to C equal to and so on. And with a delay of 555 we have applied the test vectors. See, first we have applied A 1 0 0 1 0 0, then you have said 0 0 1 1 0 0, then you have said only I mean A 1 C 0, it means the other variables are not changing, B is still 0, D is still 1, E is still 0, F is still 0. And in the last line we have written F equal to 1, that means the remaining 5 variables are same, only F is changing, F is 1 and then we finish our simulation. So, this test bench um, means if you just run you will get the outputs for this y in this order. Now, there are a few th points. So, when you write this test bench here is an example you create a dummy template module test bench and module then you instantiate your your DOT or design under test inside. So, first task for writing test bench is to create a dummy template. So, inside the dummy template of course, you will have to instantiate your design under test and whatever signals were inputs to your DOT, they will now be declared as reg and whatever signals were outputs in your DOT, they will be declared as wire. So, you see exactly that we did here. So, whatever are inputs here A, B, C, D, E, F, they have declared as reg and Y was output, Y you have declared as wire, right. The reason I have already mentioned, so these you have to declare as reg because you will be assigning them to values inside the initial procedural block. So, here let us say inside this initial block you are assigning values to A, B, C, D, E, F and you said earlier that inside any procedural block whenever you assign values the left hand side must be a reg type variable 
okay that is the reason so means after that you will have to initialize and monitor you will have to apply some values to the inputs of your dot and you will have to monitor the dot outputs in a suitable way to verify whether it is working correctly or not so for synchronous sequential circuits in addition to your inputs you may be having some clocks reset clear this kind of inputs so you need something more for sequential circuits so whatever example i took just now that is for a combination circuit but for a synchronous sequential circuit you will also need some clock generation logic there are various ways to specify clock signals we shall see later through some examples how to do it and the test bench can include some simulated directives sometimes these are called tasks also simulated directives these are very common tasks display it starts with a dollar symbol display monitor dump file dump wires finish these you have already seen in our example which you saw earlier okay and again i am repeating that you need to write a test bench only when you are carrying out simulation so if your objective is to synthesize a design then you do not need a test bench right let us now explain the meaning of the simulator directives the first simulator directive we explain is display see display is exactly similar to the printf command that you have in language like c in c whenever you want to print the value of some variables you give a printf you specify the list of the variables you want to print and also you specify a format string that tells you how you want to print okay so exactly the same way in the display directive dollar display within bracket within double quotes you first specify the format string then you specify the variables or the expressions that you want to print or display so some examples i'm giving so you can give a command like this dollar display within double quote you can say percentage b percentage d percentage h suppose i specify the names of three variables a b and c where this a can be a bit variable i can declare them let's say as a reg a a single bit variable b can be let's say an integer b can be an integer variable so i print it using the integer description d and h is an hexadecimal so let's say c can be a vector let's say c is an 8 bit vector so i am saying you display this 8 bit number in hexadecimal form so this will be displayed in hexadecimal okay this is what is meant by display you specify a list of not only variables you can also have an expression like instead of abc you can also write i want to print a plus b i want to print a star b multiplied b and then i want to print c i can also write like this okay so any expressions in general not necessarily only variables right so this display directive will be printing the variables whenever display is encountered and so whenever this is executed used to print the immediate values whatever are the immediate values so whenever display command is encountered that line is encountered whatever values of those variables are there at that point in time they will be immediately displayed okay fine so as i said you can have specifiers like binary hexadecimal and so on well you have another directive which is very similar to display monitor so the format is also quite similar syntax so initially within double quotes you give the format how you want to display then you specify some 
Well, in monitor you typically give variables not expressions because you want to monitor the value of some variables. But there is one difference from display. Display will print these values as soon as it is encountered, but monitor will not print the values immediately. So, it will print the values whenever the value of at least one of the variables change. There is a concept of event driven printing approach like suppose I say dollar monitor percentage D percentage B percentage B. Let us say I first want to display my time simulation time this will be in this dollar time means the present simulation time. This is a special variable it indicates the current simulation time then let us say I want to display two scalar variables a and b. Now, monitor means it will not print the values immediately you execute this monitor only once this monitor statement will execute only once. This you can give inside an initial statement only once, but when you see the output which will be generating you may see that output will be generating many lines. So, whenever any one of these variables change there will be one line of output generated. So, you can see how the variables are changing with time during simulation. So, this monitor command is very suitable or handy in such situation right. So, this is the display or this, this is the mainly the difference between display and monitor. So, one is an immediate print other is an event driven print ok. Now, whenever you want to finish the simulation you give this command dollar finish typically you give a delay before that let us say hash 100 dollar finish that means at time 100. So, whenever the simulation time is has reached 100 you finish like you can give as I said hash 100 dollar finish. So, what will this statement mean this statement will mean that whenever the current simulation time which is held in the variable dollar time this equals to 100 or is exceeding 100 or it is greater then stop simulation. The meaning is this right. Okay. So, there is another command called dump file where you can specify the name of a file in the argument. So, here you are actually specifying that where to dump the values of all the variables which you can view later. So, this file name will specify specifies the name of that file which will be used to store the values of some selected variables we shall, we shall see how to select them variables there is another command for that some variables will be dumped into the file. So, that you can see them later in a suitable way and this file which is specified here this typically has an extension dot vcd this is a quite commonly used file format this is the this is the, this is the acronym for value change dump and this file contains information about all changes that take place in the variables that you have specified. And during simulation wherever you encounter dollar dump off this dumping into the file will stop and whenever you again encounter dump on. So, again this dumping will start like for example, if you give a command like this let us say suppose you give initial
100 dump off. There is another initial block. Let us say you give 150 dump on. This will mean that in the axis of time, so whenever time has reached this is time. So, whenever time has reached 100, you stop the dumping temporarily pause. Then again when the time has reached 150, you again resume dumping dump on. So, you can for certain period of time you can stop the dumping operation if you want. Okay, all these controls you have with you, right? Fine. So, dump fires actually tells you. See here we have seen dump file means you are saying some selected variables will be dumped, but which variables? That you can specify in dump fires. Dump fires how we can specify? Okay, level is something which can be 0 or 1. See if level is equal to 0, if I give 0 in the first parameter, then in second parameter I give the name of a module, then all the variable name of module or list of modules, then all the variables within the modules will be dumped. Like I can specify it either in this form, I can give dump vats the first parameter I can give 0 level equal to 0 then I can give a list of modules I can write let us say module 1 module 2 like this whatever modules are there. So, what this will do so all the variables that are inside module 1 all the variables which is there within module 2 they will all be dumped ok dump var 0 means what means that and if I write dumb words 1 then I can give a list of name of variables a b c d the variables that I want to dump. Okay. So, you see so if level equal to 0 then all variables within the modules from this list will be dumped if level equal to 1 then only the listed variables will be dumped. This is the main difference. And if you give dollar dump all without giving any list, then all variables will be written to the file. Okay. So, irrespective of there is a change in the variable or not. And sometimes when you are just handling a very complex design and your simulation is going on for a long time, your dump file may become very large. So, there is also a facility where you can specify that well I will not allow my dump file to cross a certain limit like I can say it should not be more than 5 megabytes let us say. So, I can specify a file size limit in by using the command dump limit dump limit file size this can be used to set the maximum size of the dump file. right? So, let us take a small example. So, here we are taking example of a 2 bit equality checker. Well, we talked about the time scale command earlier you remember in this time scale which appears in the beginning of a module the first parameter indicates the unit like in the delay whenever if I write hash 5 it means 5 into 1 nanosecond. And the second one this 100 ps picosecond this means the resolution the simulation will be carrying out the or will be computing the results correct up to 100 picoseconds. Okay. So, this is just a module comparator which compares whether two numbers are equal or not there is one number is x 1 x 0 other is y 1 y 0 you see this assign z equal to there are four conditions separate by or this or this or this. So, what does the first condition say? It says x 0 and y 0 and y 1 and x 1 it means all of them are 1 that means this x is also 1 1 y is also 1 1. 
second one says x 0 is not y 0 is not x 1 is 1 y 1 is 1 which means 1 0 and 1 0 both are 1 0 1 0 and this is all are not 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 that means both all are 0 0 x is also 0 0 y is also 0 0 and here x 0 y 0 are 1 1 x 1 y 0 are not that means 0 1 0 1. So, for all the four combinations if they are equal z will be 1 just we are writing down the expression for that. This is a simple test bench using the commands that we have mentioned you see we have given a time scale at the beginning this is the module test bench this is the comparator module this was comparator we are giving it name c2 2 bit comparator well this is the recommended style of including or instantiating a module i mentioned earlier also instead of just writing x y z it is it is good to write using dot the name of these variables and the variables that are using here in well here in this example the names are the same but you could have used the names a b c also or you could have included the variables in a different order like you have put the z first then x then y like that it is always good to specify it like this. So, you see here we have given two initial blocks so, in the second initial block there is only a monitor statement you see t equal to percentage d we are displaying the time then x y z 2 b means mean bit within a 2 space. So, the first one will be blank. So, x y z will be z is integer you see z is output we are printing as a d this you could have also given as b no problem and this x and y are 2 bit number that is why 2 b 2 b okay. and here we have given a dump file specified a uh, file name where the values will be dumped and 0 comma name of the module test bench is the name of the module. So, inside test bench whatever variables you are declaring and the modules you are instantiating all those variables will be dumped. Then my stimulus first I am applying x equal to 0 1 y equal to 0 0 then after time 10 I am applying x equal to 1 0 y equal to 1 0 then again after time 10 I apply x equal to 0 1 y equal to 1 1. So, only for the second one there would be a match right. So, with this I come to the end of this lecture in the next lecture we shall actually be seeing some examples of the constructs that we have seen in this lecture how you can use them and what are the different ways you can generate or, or, or apply the test stimulus to a design under test this we shall be discussing in the next lecture.